So what is new in Football Manager 2009? Well, that's what I'm here to show you. Football Manager Handheld on PSP and Football Manager 2009 on PC and Mac are both due for release on November the 14th. What I'm going to be talking about today is very much the headline features for both games. There will be a lot more features announced over the coming months via a series of blogs which will also go into more information about the features as well as through the podcast and various news articles. So let's start off with Football Manager Handheld 2009. The first new feature for FMH is that you can now select multiple leagues um, when you're playing the game. So you start off with one country's leagues and then you can add up to three top tier European divisions on top of that, which means that you can move around career just like you can in the PC game. There's also two new skins for the game this year. Basically, we couldn't decide which uh, skin to go with, so we decided to put them both in a light tone skin and a dark tone skin and hopefully you can see that those look really good. Um, but the big news for the PSP game this year is the addition of the 2D match engine. Whilst this is something that PC users have got used to over the years, it's brand new for the PSP and we've actually got two views rather than the normal one. So you can see the full match or you can see a special zoomed in mode. Now, what have the development team who work on Football Manager at Sports Interactive been working on this year? The first thing that I want to talk about is assistant manager feedback. This is something that's consistently come up whenever we've spoken to new users about the game and it's something that old users will find incredibly useful too. The way that it works is during a match your assistant manager will give you feedback in two specific areas which are motivation as in a player's motivation during a match and also general feedback on whether your tactics are working, how the opposition are exploiting your tactics what you could be doing to exploit their tactics and also important information such as team blend. So in football over the last few years the, the media have played a much more important part in the modern game and that's something we've tried to reflect in Football Manager with, uh, with your dealings with the press. This year we've expanded on that um, more as, as we do most years um, and there are some new news items in there and also a lot of improved news items with a lot more information in there. There are also some nice transfer rumours and these work much the same way as a lot of websites that you see. Um, some of the rumours will be completely made up and some of them will be, uh, will be pretty accurate and they're listed there for each, each of the teams. But the biggest change this year for, from a media perspective is we've now added press conferences into the game. And these happen before and after matches um, and also happen when you first get the job. With the press conferences, it's not just answering a series of questions. You also get to build up relationships with the journalists over time and the answers that you give to the questions can come back to haunt you, so you've got to be quite careful. The journos do remember what you've said. So we've added a couple of areas to the game this year with regards to training. Um, one of those is with the player preferred moves, which is something that we added into the Football Manager series a couple of years ago, um, which gave the players a bit more personality, you know, with people um, being able to do step overs or diving into tackles. And having spoken to a lot of footballers and seen footballers being interviewed about how they learned to curl the perfect free kick, um, the answer is always the same, which is they basically stayed late after training and practiced and practiced and practiced. So you've now got the opportunity to go and ask your players to learn a special move. And you do this via the player interaction screen. Obviously, if you do have a, a giant centre back and you're asking to learn how to do step overs, might not work, but it's certainly very useful if you choose the, the, the right one and um, very useful for getting those youngsters ready for the first team. Another new addition is you can now play as a female manager. Um, it's been something that hasn't been possible in the game before, so we've made sure that all of the text in the game has, um, now has a female gender um, to make sure that we are representing people properly as well as having the opportunity to start the game as a female manager. So at Sports Interactive, um, we release games each year in the Football Manager series. So when we sit down and work out what we're going to do with the next release of the game, it's not just about the new features. We also have to look at areas of the game that we want to improve. Um, and we're very fortunate because we've got a very active community um, who certainly tell us exactly what they think about the games. Um, and when they're being constructive about it, it's really, really useful. 
So there are five main areas of the game that we've improved this year. The first of these is board confidence, which was something that was added to the game last year, um, where your board will give you feedback basically on how they think the team are getting on, um, which helps you as a manager know how you've got to improve. Um, as well as adding two areas uh, to the board confidence section with squad harmony and club stature, We've also taken into account all the feedback we've had on the forums, looked at every single incident that's been reported to us as a bug um, and, uh, and tried to fix absolutely everything. So hopefully this year that feature will go down a lot better. We've also spent a lot of time, as we always do, updating all of the competitions in the game. So all 51 countries leagues are fully updated. And at the time that we're filming this, it looks like we're going to tip 350,000 players and staff in the database for the first time. As well as updating competitions, it's also important for us to get the financial modelling of all of the uh, different countries and all the different leagues correct. And this year we spent a lot of time looking at feedback from all of our researchers to try and model every single financial area of the game correctly. We've also had a bit of a revamp of the user interface for the game. Every year now we do usability studies after the game comes out to try and find out um, how people are playing the game and what they're finding easy. So we've done a lot of work off the back of that. Another um, quite cool thing that we've done from the, uh, from the usability study is added widescreen support to the game for the first time. Another area of the game that we've uh, completely changed is the transfer system. Um, we actually ripped out the code and rewrote it from scratch. This means that the game's shortlisting module will be a lot more efficient and also a lot more accurate. So hopefully you'll see the game predicting a lot more real, real world transfers. So there's one main area for Football Manager 09 left to talk about and that's the match engine. Um, we've been very lucky in this last 12 months in that we've been working on a game called Football Manager Live and have been in beta test for 12 months now. So this year's match engine has seen more testing than ever before. We're pretty proud of the way it's gone. There have also been some tactics changes which we'll explain about in a blog much closer to release. But there's one other big change this year and that is that the match engine is now in 3D. This is something that we had always said that when the technology was there, we wanted to do. We've been working on this for nearly three years and have been very fortunate to have the support of Sega Japan's Virtual Striker team and have been able to use the motion capture work that they've done in the past. Um, what you're seeing on screen at the moment is probably about 50% of the way there um, animations wise. We've still got a lot more to do in the next couple of months but we are incredibly confident that it will be absolutely fantastic um, to look at and that you will get everything that you want out of the match engine. However, for those people who don't want us to move 3D, don't worry, the 2D option will still be in there in the same way as when we added 2D, we kept the highlights mode in there, so there will be something for everyone inside the game. Just to be clear, that's the Football Manager match engine that's been tested thoroughly throughout the year in Football Manager Live, now displaying fully in 3D. We've also added another couple of extra features to the match screen. One is something that we have accidentally borrowed from, uh, from Football Manager Live, which is the time bar, which you can see on the bottom of the screen. That lets you rewind the action whenever you want to, to be able to see instant replays there and then. We've also added a totally new way to watch the match in the TV view. You can still use the old panel display if you want to whilst you're watching the match or by switching to the new view you get a full screen so you can see more of the pitch and you can also choose which widgets as we call them you want to see. The widgets are things like player ratings, the match radar and all the little bits of information that you normally have visible but you can now see them all on one screen at one time. So that's all the information that I'm going to be giving out about Football Manager 2009 for now. As I mentioned earlier, we'll be giving out more information throughout the coming months through a series of blogs and also through the Football Manager podcast. Hopefully it's whet your appetite and we look forward to trying out the game when the demo is released a few weeks before the official release date.